Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. Patience of this, we give you the glory. All honor and adoration be unto your holy name. Thank you for another wonderful opportunity to be in your presence. Thank you for the grace that we enjoy. Excellent God, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Daddy, your word says that at the entrance of your word, life cometh and bringeth understanding to the simple. Daddy, we are simple folks. We know nothing. Teach us today in the name of Jesus. Speak to us today in the name of Jesus. Give us understanding in the name of Jesus. And at the end of it all, let all the glory go to you. Thank you, ancient of this. All honor and adoration be unto your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Brethren, welcome to church. And I and wherever you are watching us this morning, I pray that your joy will be full in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to first and foremost appreciate uh, Daddy in the house, our pastor, uh, for giving us this um, wonderful opportunity to stand on this hallowed altar of the Lord to just share a word with the children of God. I pray, sir, your anointing will not run dry in the name of Jesus. The work the Lord has placed in your hand will continue to grow and you will not miss out of your reward in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So we are in the week, I mean, the season of Thanksgiving. And if we look around us, we we'll see that um, in the United States in this um, last week, we, it was a season of talkies and um, so many feasting, celebrations and what have you. You know, and I pray that for as many as have cause to give thanks, they will not have cause to sorrow in the name of Jesus. So we are still in that season and I want to just encourage us with these few words. Just to let us know that Thanksgiving is not, by the design of the Lord, it's not a yearly thing. It's not even a weekly thing. But it is something that the Lord expects us to do regularly. Something that God expects to be part of our lives. And that's what I want to share with us this morning. And the topic of this message is Thanksgiving, the key to victorious living. How many of us want to be victorious? You will be victorious in the name of Jesus. I say you will be victorious in the name of Jesus. Now, to start us off, I want us to know that in life, generally as we go through life, there are different seasons which evokes different emotions in us. There are times that we, 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 we go through certain trials, certain temptations that make us feel, okay, we, do, we, don't, we don't want to give thanks in such situations. And if we look at the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 8, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 8, it tells us clearly that to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. It tells us that there's a time to be born. And it tells us that there's a time to die. It tells us that there's a time to plant. And a time to pluck out up that which is planted. It goes further to tell us that there's a time to kill. And a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. It went on to say that there's a time to weep. And there's a time to laugh. There's a time to mourn, and there's a time to dance. There's a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather souls together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. There's a time to get, and a time to lose. A time to keep, and a time to cast away. There's a time to rend, and a time to sue. A time to keep silent. And a time to speak. And finally, there's a time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. 
These are different seasons, different emotions that we experience in life. You know? And if we look at that, by that chapter that we have just read closely, we will discover that if we compartmentalize it, we will see that it tells us that there are particular seasons that we experience certain emotions, that we experience certain things. You know? Certain things. In the text above, we can identify certain times that we can identify as joyous times. For example, a time that we give birth is a time of joy. Is that not so? A time of harvest is a time of joy. A time of healing is a time of joy. When we build, it's a time of joy. When we, well, you know, when we have cause to laugh, according to that, that uh, it's, it's, it's a time to, to really appreciate God. But on the other hand, there are situations that also come. There are things that happen that makes us feel that maybe we've been changed. Maybe God is not there for us. And maybe, you know, this, this is a test that we are not ready for. And those seasons include the season of death, the season of you know, or bereavement. How many can truly give thanks in the times of bereavement? How many can give time in the, in the times of weeping? Maybe something has happened and it's caused one to weep. Or in the time of mourning. Or in the time, the time of, you know, silence. When the head is bowed, you know, because of sorrow. Or in time of war. How I many can really thank God in those seasons? But what does the Bible say concerning our attitude to thanksgiving? In spite of our emotions and every other thing. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18 tells us, and I want us to read it together. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18 only. Let's take it together. It says, in everything, come on, let's read loudly. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. A heavily loaded verse. It's telling us that in spite of all the emotions, all the things that happen, as we read in that Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 8, that no matter what comes our way, no matter the situation that we face, that our attitude, the expectation of God for us, the will of God for us is that in everything, in all situations, we should do what? We should give thanks. And what I got from that particular verse that we have just read is that number one, thanksgiving is not dependent on our emotions or feelings. Thanksgiving is not dependent on our emotions or feelings. That is one. It doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter the emotions that you are experiencing. What God is saying is that just give thanks. It could have been worse than that. Just give thanks. Just thank him. Not only that, one other thing that we will learn from that verse is that thanksgiving is not dependent on our situation or circumstance. It is not. It's not dependent whether you have to eat, give thanks. Whether you are in lack, give thanks. Everything will work together for good for you. And that will be your portion in the name of Jesus. I said that will be your portion in the name of Jesus. Not only that, we're also told in that particular verse that thanksgiving is not an optional thing. It's not a choice that, okay, if I like, I give thanks. If I like, I don't give thanks. If you are truly a believer that has submitted to the will of God, it means that no matter what you pass through, you will give thanks. Because that place tells us clearly that thanksgiving is the will of God. It's the will. He wants us to appreciate him. He desires our appreciation. He desires our thanksgiving. He wants us to rest on him at all times. And there are examples that we can see in the Bible. Our Lord Jesus Christ gave us certain examples 
which I want us to look at very quickly. There are about three situations that arose that you wouldn't expect our Lord to give thanks. But what did he do? He gave thanks. He gave thanks. And there are lessons that we can learn from there. There are things that the Lord is teaching us concerning how he handled those situations. How we too, even when things don't seem okay, even when you, know, you look around us, in this season, I mean, we, we thank God for life, thank God for everything. But there are so many depressing things around us when you look around you. But then God is saying that, I am on the throne. I am there for you. Just give thanks. Just thank me. It doesn't matter what you are passing through. Just thank me. So in one of the situations, we will see our Lord Jesus Christ doing, giving thanks in a particular testy situation, in a particular situation that does not require giving thanks. In John chapter 6, verse 1 to 13, we'll see a situation there. John chapter 6, verse 1 to 13. It tells us that after this, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. In other words, the Lord in his mission, in his preaching mission, you know, in his evangelical mission, was going from place to place. And as he was growing, multitudes were following him. A great crowd was following him. But then he got to a stage where the crowd followed him to a particular location where they couldn't access food. It was a situation where we can say that there was scarcity. There was lack. There was want. It was a situation where even, you know, the, 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 the one with the biggest faith would find difficult to even, you know, ex exercise the faith at that particular time. You know, it was a situation of lack. Here we have a situation where 5,000 people are gathered. Number one, even if there was no lack, how much do you think would be enough to feed 5,000 people in the midst of a wilderness, in the midst of nowhere? You know? So, what happened was, there, like I said, there was lack, there was scarcity, there was want. But let's go further in verse 5 of that particular place. That's particular, John chapter 6, verse 1 to 13. Please, media, please give me verse 5 of John chapter 6, verse 1 to 13. It says, when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, when shall we buy bread that this may eat? Brethren, I don't know the situation you are. Maybe you are wondering where will the next meal come from? Just like our Lord was wondering here. He said, where can we buy bread? To feed all these people. We have a situation that looks insurmountable. How can we confront this situation? Not because he doesn't know what to do. But because he wants to see. Like us as believers. How we react to situations. When situations like that arise. But how did our Lord combat this thing? What happened was that the Lord, there was a divine provision of just two loaves of, uh, five loaves of bread and two fishes. A boy's lunch. And what happened was the Lord took that five loaves of bread and two fishes and what did he do? He gave thanks. He gave thanks. He gave thanks. In spite of the fact that Humanly speaking, how can five loaves of bread and two fishes feed 5,000 people? He gave thanks. He took a little boy's lunch of five loaves and two fish and gave thanks. And as he gave thanks, see what thanksgiving can do. Multiplication came. Multiplication came. As he gave thanks, the heavens opened. I declare and declare that as you thank the Lord for today, the heavens will open for you in the name of Jesus. I say the heavens will open for you in the name of Jesus. 
He fed 5,000 people just because he gave thanks with five loaves of bread and two fishes. And not only that, the scripture tells us that there was even leftover. So my brother, my sister, the lesson the Lord is teaching us there is that number one, when you see the mega balance in your account, give thanks. Give thanks. Because that is your own five loaves of bread and two fishes. Increase is coming in the name of Jesus. When your food store seems to be running dry, give thanks. Thank him for the little that you have. Bless him for the little that you have. When your abundance, when your expectation of abundance supplies is not materializing, maybe you have put in a lot and you are expecting a lot to come and it's not materializing, still give thanks. When you give thanks for the little that you have, the source of your supply will increase. And in spite of when you give thanks, in spite of the little that you have, your little will become much, even with leftovers. So, my brother, my sister, don't despair. Maybe you don't, you look at what you have and you are feeling okay. Compared to the needs, it's not enough. The Lord is on the throne. Give thanks to him and he will increase you in the mighty name of Jesus. We have a second situation. In Luke chapter 22, just 14 to 20. A second situation that the Lord gave thanks. He said, and when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. You know? And he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you, before I suffer. <laughs> For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof, until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup, and gave thanks, and said, take this, and divide it, among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. In verse 19 he says, and he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after suffer say, this cup is for the New Testament my blood which is shed for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, this is a situation that is quite interesting. Here was our Lord preparing to go to the cross, preparing to go and die, preparing to face the worst form of you know, punishment that can never be meted out to a man. Yet, what did he do? He gave thanks. This, you know, he gave thanks. He was going to face a task. That was so onerous. A task that was, you know, that, that, that you can't imagine. A task that, you know, we, 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 we can say was one of the most difficult tasks on earth. He was going to face this task. Yes, what did he do? He gave thanks. Here was the Lord. The cross was before him. He gave thanks. He was faced with the prospect of the most gruesome death ever you know, invented by man. Yet he gave thanks. He was faced with a situation where the cup was so heavy for him to bear. What did he still do? He gave thanks. The task before him was, like I said, unrest, yet he gave thanks. Why should the Lord give thanks in that situation? And how many of us can truly say that when faced with such situation, we can give thanks? When faced with, with a situation where we are faced with imminent persecution, imminent trial, imminent temptation, heavy burden, we can still give thanks. The lesson for us from the experience of our Lord is that he focused more on the crown than the cross. When you are going through trial and temptation, focus on the big picture. Know that God is using that occasion to work out a greater glory for you. So if the cross you are called to bear is heavy, give thanks. You are not giving thanks 
for the challenge or rejoicing in the problem, but in the knowledge that your present light affliction is working out for you a greater weight of glory. That's what made the Lord, prompted him to give thanks. Because he knew that after the cross, there is a crown. Hallelujah. For you, after the cross, there is a crown in the name of Jesus. So are you, he was facing a situation where there was a gang up. He was innocent, yet he was accused. So like our Lord, when you face conspiracies, when you face gang ups, even when you are innocent, when people gang up against you, when they conspire against you, even when you are innocent of all accusation, give thanks. You know one thing? He took the conspiracy of the brethren, of his brothers, to launch Joseph into the throne. He took the conspiracy. If, they, if they did, if they, the conspiracy was part of the process that God used to do what? To take him to the throne. So when you are accused, maybe in your working place or anywhere, and you are, they gang up against you like our Lord, that is not the time to murmur. That is not the time to grumble. That is the time to give thanks. Just thank the Lord. And the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. So the conspirators against Joseph meant it for evil. But God turned it to good. Look beyond the cross and focus on the crown. Our Lord gave thanks because he knew that through his sacrifice, more will be won to the kingdom. And today, because of that sacrifice, you and I are co heirs of the kingdom. So give thanks when you face such situations. And the last one that I want to quickly run through is found in the book of John chapter 11, just for to, for verse 41 to 43 alone. John chapter 11, verse 41 to 43 alone. It said, then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Hallelujah. He said, and I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Brethren, the long and short of that story is that there was a situation where a man had died for four days. A man had died for four days. In fact, according to the sisters, he was already stinking. He was already stinking. This man died for four days. If you read from verse 1, he said, in fact, when Jesus was informed that this man is sick, he didn't go immediately. All he just said is, this one is not unto death, but is unto the glory of God. So when this man died, Jesus left. He went there, and when he got there, <laughs> it is surprising that in a situation where you have a corpse lying down, our Lord can still give thanks. There was a corpse lying down, yet he gave thanks. Hallelujah. So, the lesson that we can learn mostly from there is that if Jesus, in the most extremes of problem, shows us that the solution is still, thank you, Father, then how much more should we thank God in the midst of the less serious problems that we face? Many a times when we face problems, when we face challenges, what happens is that we grumble and we murmur. We grumble and we murmur. So, if, if thanksgiving can raise the dead, the lesson for us is that let us give thanks even when we are surrounded by negative circumstances. Let's give thanks. Because he gave thanks, the miraculous happened. The miracle. So one of the things that we learn from there is that when you give thanks, miracles happen. Miracles happen when you give thanks. Jesus gave thanks because he knew that in thanking God ahead, his prayers will be answered. And I decree and declare that your prayers are answered in the name of Jesus. So we should not, we should focus more on thanksgiving than requests. That's what that place is telling us. When we thank God ahead of answers to our prayers, we are simply expressing faith. 
and confidence in our Heavenly Father because he never fails. Even in the most distressing situation, when you are groaning in the spirit, when you are surrounded by mockers, remember, if you read that story, there were people who were mocking him. There were people who, 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 who you know, they were there to mock. There were people who were not there to encourage, who were there to mourn. When you are surrounded by people who want to, you know, a pity party, when you are surrounded by mockers, the solution is give thanks. When you give thanks, miracles happen. And as you do so, the Lord will do wondrous things in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. In conclusion, how should we give thanks? How should we give thanks? There are different ways to give thanks. You can give thanks through prayer. Give thanks through prayer. Pray. Pray prayer of thanksgiving. Your prayer should be more of prayer of thanksgiving than request. Not only that, testify about his goodness. What is the statistics for about the corona or something now? About 250 or something are gone. Do you think it is because your immunity, your immunity is stronger than them? No. It is the goodness of God. Tell others about the goodness of God. Testify about his goodness. And the Lord will bless you as you do so in the name of Jesus. Not only that, give Bless his work materially. Bless his work. Bless his people. Give in appreciation of what the Lord has done. Obey him totally. Appreciate others too. Others that God has used. Not only that, build a strong relationship with God and be ready to sacrifice all to him. Most importantly, sing praises to him. He delights in the praises of his people. As you do so, the Lord will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, I don't know what your situation is like this morning. Maybe you don't even feel there is a, anything to be thankful for. Maybe you even think that God has abandoned you. Just think deeply. Meditate this morning. You may not be where you want to be, but you are certainly not where you were before. You know, meditate on his goodness. Count your blessing. Raise a song of thanksgiving to him now. It is well with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Shall we rise to our feet? Shall we rise to our feet? Choir, I want us to just take this hymn. I want us to just take this hymn.
Count your blessings. Count your blessings, baby. One by one. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. See what God has done. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. Brethren, 